Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code, a place for you to learn with me as I dive deep into the coding world. Now before I start, if you want to learn a little more, please check out my website, my Instagram or my GitHub for projects. The links for these will all be in the descriptions below, so please feel free. Also don't forget to subscribe to see more videos from me as I teach you through the basics. Today we will be looking at object-oriented programming and how we can create our own objects using the class keyword. Okay, so when it comes to object-oriented programming, it is quite a big concept and some people do find it extremely difficult. However, the better we can learn to understand object-oriented programming, the easier it is to create code that is a lot more readable, but is also designed around human or real world, um, real world objects. So for example, if we had a car, then yes, we have a car, but we also have a make and a model for the car, which span across a lot of different types. But then we can also go further and we can break down a car by looking at the interior and the exterior, as well as what kind of uh, petrol or diesel or electric so there are lots of things that we can do with a car, but the car is represented as a label of car. Object-oriented programming is very similar because we are able to create things that are, an, are a structure, basically, of um, real-world objects, and each structure will have its own have its own attribute and behavior that will span for multiple different um, versions of it. So we might have the attribute and behavior of a human. The attribute would be name, age, and height, but the behavior would be things like walk, run, and speak. So to get started understanding a little bit about object-oriented programming, we have already been using object-oriented programming a lot through Python. Now, if you were to say, print the type of something. So if I was to print the type of hello, and I think, ooh, I think there's gonna be a little bit of time whilst this just boots up. Yes, so down here we now have class string. So the class of string is actually, a, um, is actually part of object-oriented programming. We can make our own objects or we can create our own objects of this class by assigning it to a variable. So word is equal to hello. Now if we were to print the type of word, then we again get string. Now what we can do with this is because we have an object, we have instantiated the class of string, so we have created our own object of it, we can now use the methods that are created inside of the class. And these are the methods that we have been using already, including things like upper, lower, strip. So there are a lot of things that we can actually do with object-oriented programming, but the reason why Python and object-oriented programming works so well is because everything in Python is an object. So whatever data type we create, we will be creating or instantiating a class and using object-oriented programming in that way. So to start with, let's just see how we were how we would create our own. So as we've seen down here, it is a class of string. So we can use the class keyword to create our own. So what we'll do is we'll just use an example. So class example, and then if we were to just pass this, so it did absolutely nothing, then we can instantiate the um, example class just by giving it, just by assigning it to a variable. So now if we run this, we won't actually get anything back, but we can now print the type of eg, and eg is a variable that has been instantiated by this example class. So if we run this, we now see down here we get class main because that's the file type and then the name example so this is a class of example from this file now there are lots of different ways that we can um, actually get 
um, object-oriented programming under wraps. But to start with, let's just create now our first method. So a method is, as you've seen with the word that I made a minute ago, so word is equal to hello, and then word dot upper. So as I said a minute ago, this dot upper is a method. Now inside of our class, we can create our own methods. So if I was to say def greet and pass in the self keyword, then we can, inside of this method, we can call whatever code we want to run. So say hi. So what is happening here is we have our own um, example class and the only method that it has is a greet method, which is made exactly the same way as a function. However, it takes the self parameter and this means that everything inside of the example class can access this as long as it has the self parameter. So you'll see more about this when we get onto constructors in a minute. But now, now that we have eg equals example, I can now call eg dot greet. And then if I run this and save, we now get here, say hi. So this is how we can create our own and we can start using object oriented programming to make our code a lot easier to use and read. Classes are a very, very useful way of taking real world objects and creating um, multiple different ways of actually getting these objects used by different things. So as I said with cars, we would have one specific car. However, there are makes and models and different um, petrol types, etc. that all cars need to have, but it is different and unique to every instance of the car. So now I spoke a minute ago about the constructors. So if we were to, I'll just delete all this, if we were to create our own, so this time we will use a person. So we are going to create an object of a person. And what we'll do is the first method usually is the underscore underscore init underscore underscore method. And this is a constructor. It's a special method also known as a double under or a dunder. And the constructor basically allows us to give attributes to the class or to the, um, to the instance of the class. So what I mean by this is if we give the underscore underscore init method, now it uses self because everything that's inside of a class, every function or method inside of a class needs to use the self keyword. So now if we wanted to give a person some kind of attributes, well, firstly, we would need to give a name. And secondly, we would probably need to give an age. Those two are the main attributes that people need to know about. So what we'll do is name and age. And then now what we do is because when we call this, um, when we call the person, we will be passing in a name and an age. So now we need to have a way of actually using the name and age within the whole class. So self.name is equal to name and self.age is equal to age. So what this is doing is when it's called, so if I create a instance of this class, so person one is equal to person. And now we need to give it two attributes. The first being a name, so Chris, and the second being an age, so 26. Now, what we've done now is by using self.name equal to name, when this has been instantiated, we then pass Chris into name, and then we assign self.name to Chris. So every time we are then using self.name within this class, we will be passing in the value of Chris. So we could, for instance, make a new method that said uh, greet and then self. And now we can just do print and then an F string saying, say hi, and then self.name. So now if I run this and then did person one dot greet, oh, my bad. And then ran this, we get down here, say hi, Chris. So now you have seen how to actually set an attribute 
by using the self.name or self dot um, parameter or self dot argument, whatever it is that you are using. Um, and then we can actually use that inside of another method just by calling the self dot before. So when this constructor is, or whenever we have an instance of this uh, person class being created, this constructor, constructor method will always be run. So if I was to print a statement just saying I have run, and then if we were to, I'll delete this because we don't have a group method anymore. So we have person one, now we'll have person two, Adam, cannot spell right now, and then 30. And then now if we run this, we get down here, I have run and I have run. And that's because we ha now have two different instances of this class. So this has run twice because we have person one and person two. Now person one is completely different to person two because person one has the attributes of Chris and 26, whereas person two has the attributes of Adam and 30. So there are a few different things that we can do. But now what we'll do is we'll just use the self, we'll just create another method so that we can actually access the user's name. So def get name and then self. And what we'll do is we'll just return self.name. So now person one dot get name and then person two dot get name need to put this into a print statement and then because it's only returning the self.name so we actually wouldn't output anything so now we have I have run I have run and then Chris and Adam so we are literally just returning the self.name parameter which is whatever is passed in here So we can also now, because we've got the name, we can also use a method called setName. And this will actually allow us to change the user's name. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just delete person two so it's not too clogged up. But now we have the get name, we can create the setName. And this is one way of um, actually allowing our um, objects once they've been created to actually change the attributes that were de uh, defined. So this is a very, very useful way of making your um, classes mutable basically. So self.name is equal to name and what we actually want to do is we want to pass in a new name parameter. So now person1.getName, that should say Chris. So what we'll do is we'll do um, person one dot set name and we'll pass in a parameter of say Steve and now what we'll do is we'll print the person one dot get name and what we should see down there is Chris and then Steve so Chris and then Steve and also the I have run because we have that as the as part of the constructor so now we have different ways of getting and setting our um, names. We can do this with ages and we can do this with a lot of different things. So what we'll just do quickly is we will create a um, very, very quick shoe shop. And the shoe shop will basically allow a person who wants to buy a pair of shoes. Um, they obviously need to give the shop owner some uh, specifics such as the sh um, size and the color of the shoes. So what we'll do is we'll just delete all this and then we'll create a class and we'll call it shoe shop. Now notice the camel case. So we'll start with um, an uppercase and then lowercase and then uppercase and then lowercase. I actually don't think that's camel case, but title case, whatever it is, that case is what is used for, um, for object oriented programming. The first letter is always uppercase and then the first letter of every next word is uppercase. So now we have the shoe shop class, we will use a init method, and this will take in the self, and then a size and a color. And what we want to do is just allow the 
rest of the class to actually access these attributes. So self.size is equal to size and self.color is equal to color. And then what we'll do is we'll just print the details of each uh, shoe or each customer's order. So def print order and then self. And what we're gonna do is we'll just use a print statement that has an F string that says the customer's shoes are a size and then self.size and self.color and they are self.color. So now what we can do is we can instantiate this class and we can create two different classes. And um, so these will represent two different types of shoes. So S1 is equal to shoe shop. And what we'll do is we'll pass in the size nine and then the color of black. And then we'll create a second shoe. So shoe shop, shoe shop size say four and then color of blue. And now what we can do is just do S1 dot print order and then S2 dot print order. And now if we run this, we get down here, the customer's shoes are a size nine and they are black. And then the customer's shoes are a size four and they are black. That's all for today's video. Hopefully this has helped your understanding on how we can use the class keyword to represent real life objects and create code that resembles that. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover further, please don't hesitate in reaching out to me by dropping a comment below on Instagram or through my website. Stay tuned as in my next video, I will be taking a look at some more front end design. If you liked what we've been through today and you want to learn more, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date. Thank you and see you next time.